Hello and welcome to this first video on nuclear chemistry aimed at National 5, National 4 level. This one is about nucleosynthesis. That's a very big scary word and hopefully by the end of this video you'll know what it's about. Before we start, however, there are some basic things about atomic structure that we're going to need to know for this video and for later ones. First of all, remember that an atom is basically empty space. But at the middle of that empty space, there is a core that we call the nucleus. Now, the nucleus is going to be very important for this section. That's where the term nuclear comes from. It means to do with the nucleus. Now, in the nucleus, you've got particles called protons. Now, those protons have a positive charge and a mass of one atomic mass unit, one AMU. Remember, that's by definition, by the way. We define the atomic mass unit as the mass of a proton. The number of protons in an atom is its atomic number. And remember, that's what defines an element. Each element has a different atomic number. And every atom of the same element has the same number of protons, the same atomic number. So if you know an atomic number, you can de de determine what the element is. There are also particles in the nucleus called neutrons. These have no charge, but again have a mass of 1 AMU. These won't be essential for this video, but we will need them later on. Note. Now the total number of protons and neutrons is the mass number. Basically, between them, the protons and the neutrons determine how heavy an atom is. And finally, we've got particles called electrons, which orbit the nucleus in things we call energy levels. They have a negative charge and a mass of about two thousandths of an AMU. Usually we just ignore their mass, but we might want to have that particular piece of information in a little while. OK, to start with, let's have a nice relaxing picture of some ducks and swans. I took that at a local pond on New Year's Day. I want us to take a moment to think of the variety of elements on Earth. You've got the water, made of hydrogen and oxygen. You've got the trees, made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, but also nitrogen, sulphur, phosphorus. You've got the air, again, mostly oxygen nitrogen, but also neon and argon. So on Earth, we've got dozens of different elements making up millions of different compounds. You've got a huge variety of substances. Compare that with the sun. The sun is made almost entirely of hydrogen, with a fair amount of helium and only trace amounts of other elements. So Two questions. Why is there such a big difference between what makes up the Earth and what makes up the Sun? And what is this to do with nuclear synth nuclear synthesis? OK, let's consider the Sun. The Sun is basically a big ball of hydrogen gas. It's a typical star. That's what stars are. They're big balls of hydrogen gas. Now, just because hydrogen is a gas doesn't mean that it's not affected by gravity. Gravity will tend to pull the hydrogen gas toward the middle of the star, just as gravity tends to pull you toward the middle of the Earth. Gravity will tend to pull the hydrogen gas inward toward the centre. That means gravity basically is trying to make the sun shrink. So why doesn't the sun shrink? That's because at the middle of the, the sun, as with all stars, there's a lot of heat, a lot of energy being generated. And heat tends to make gases expand. So you've got two things going on here. You've got gravity pulling the hydrogen inward toward the middle, and you've got heat produced in the middle driving the hydrogen out. And for the sun, these two things balance out. So, why is heat being generated in the middle of the sun? 
or any other star for that matter. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to be looking then at the middle of the sun, the core. Okay, now I've told you that basically this is a big ball of hydrogen gas and it's tempting then to think of the middle of the sun being made of lots of hydrogen atoms at a big distance from each other because that's what gases are like. Generally, atoms and molecules of gas are far away from each other. However, two things are different here. First of all, it is so hot in the middle of the sun that the electrons tend to be stripped off the atoms and you're left just with the nuclei. So what you've got is a whole bunch of hydrogen nuclei here. Really just protons. And as we'll see at a later video, neutrons. But we're not going to worry about the neutrons right for the moment. Second thing is, the pressure at the middle of the sun tends to push those nuclei close together. So, two things. You've got nuclei here, not atoms, nuclei, quite close together and moving quite fast. Okay, so let's take two hydrogen nuclei here and see what happens when they come together. There you go. Mostly they bounce off because they're positively charged. Both nuclei here are positively charged. One plus because you've got one proton. Okay, Atomic number of hydrogen is one, so each nucleus here has one proton. So one plus charge. Opposite charges repel, so they tend to bounce off. Every so often, however, though, these nuclei will be moving fast enough to bump into each other and allow a thing called the strong nuclear force to take over. And that will join these nuclei together. When that happens, there's a big release of energy. And you're left with that. The two nuclei literally join together. And you've now got two plus because those two protons have joined together to make a nucleus with two protons. But hang on, the atomic number of hydrogen is one, so this can't be hydrogen. This is helium. What's happened here is that two hydrogen nuclei have joined together to form a helium nucleus. That is what nuclear synthesis is, the joining together of the nuclei of different atoms to make new atoms of different elements. So, what's going on here? Nucleosynthesis then takes place in the cores of stars. Mostly, you've got hydrogen nuclei fusing, that's a posh word for joining together, hydrogen nuclei fusing to form helium nuclei. Now, you can say then that a new nucleus has been produced. You've not got the nuclei you had to start with, it's a different one. That's what nucleosynthesis is. Now, the really important thing is that this releases a lot of energy. If you take the hydrogen bombs that we built on Earth, these release enormous amounts of energy, enough to destroy whole cities using just a tiny amount of hydrogen. And this is where all the energy on Earth comes from, pretty much. This is where all the light, the heat that comes from the sun, is generated. Okay, so what about other elements? Well, let's take two helium nuclei. If you join two helium nuclei together, the same thing happens. Burst of energy, and they literally join together to make this new nucleus. This now has four protons, so that's beryllium you've now got a nucleus of beryllium. That then could hit another helium nucleus. They fuse together, release energy, and now you've got six protons in that nucleus. That then is carbon. And this can keep happening. Nucleus, nuclei can join together, release energy, and become new nuclei. In this case, oxygen. And go on to neon. Each time energy being released as the nuclei join together. However, 
as the nuclei get bigger, the amount of energy being released each time gets smaller. So, fusion that creates sulfur releases less energy than fusion that creates neon. And so we can keep going until we get to iron. After iron, you don't get any more energy released. This is as far as it goes for fusion that releases energy. All the processes so far have been exothermic. If you want to join nuclei together bigger than iron, you're going to have to put energy in. Now that's not going to happen spontaneously. There has to be some other process that's going to produce enough energy to join nuclei together if they're bigger than iron. And there's only one phenomenon, as far as we know, that does that. And that is the supernova. When really, really big stars get to the end of their lives, they blow themselves up, releasing a massive, huge amount of energy, enough to make nuclei join together to produce elements with bigger atomic numbers than iron. And as far as we know, this is where all the elements with atomic numbers bigger than iron come from. Supernova explosions. So, what do we now know? In the cores of stars, nuclei of atoms fuse to produce bigger nuclei. They join together, and that process releases energy. This is where all the energy produced by stars comes from. The most common form of fusion is this one here, where two hydrogen nuclei fuse to produce a helium nucleus. But this is what's responsible for building up all the elements up to and including iron, atomic number 26. This is where all the elements on Earth come from, by the way, is either through this process or as the result of supernovas. Okay, you should now be clear about what nucleosynthesis involves and what fusion involves. Thanks for watching. Bye just now.